Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to be here on campus in, in Delft. I uh, can imagine you want to be here as well, uh, working on that. Um, but for me, it's, it's great to talk to you this morning. Uh, so uh, please shoot your questions. Um, we got some questions sent in previously by uh, by students, and a lot of them are wondering because um, you just experienced what it's like in uh, in one of our first year lectures, um, and they're wondering how are these experiences from the students taken into account uh, in big uh, government decisions regarding, uh, for example, COVID measures, because uh, yeah, a lot of them they they don't feel heard, they don't feel um, like like. Uh, the government knows uh, how they're doing and uh, that that is taken into account. So. Well, uh, we do our utmost to listen to uh, students. Uh, I myself, I go to uh, these online courses and lectures uh, two, three times a week and uh, talk to students. Just ask them, how's your education? But how are you? Uh, how are you doing? And what we fully understand in government is how difficult this time is for uh, young people, uh, because, well, it's the time in your life you're uh, looking for freedom and uh, that's exactly what you don't have, uh, freedom in uh, uh, to go out, uh, to meet your friends, uh, to have this social interaction. And what I see is that the lectures are quite good uh, and your education is quite good and the results from students are, uh, well, under the circumstances, uh, actually, uh, it's a great achievement for students and uh, uh, and their teachers. Um, but in looking for student welfare, well, what we try to do is, can we have more room for students on campus? Uh, can we give them uh, back sports? Uh, and can we give them some room to meet, uh, to interact? Um, first, first and foremost, for first year students uh, to get to know each other, get to know uh, uh, their town, uh, for some international students to get to know the Netherlands. Uh, so yes, it's uh, on top of the table. And um, uh, yesterday, uh, I can say we had a long discussion about education and how we are going to open up again, uh, step by step. And uh, we're really looking into it. And we fully understand that this is a very good, difficult time. And um, Student welfare is a great concern on this moment. OK, um, so I have had a lot of questions from students asking uh, if the libraries can open up again, because uh, the way it was is you went into a library with a time slot and then you sat down, you studied. So you didn't have a lot of social contacts, plus the uh, one and a half meters uh, apart uh, did prevent a lot of spread of the COVID. Um, so a lot of students were wondering if they could open up again because the concentration you have in a library is, of course, very different from what you can experience at home. Yes, um, I fully understand. And um, I heard from students as well that it's very important that you uh, have this time slot, uh, if only once a week, that you can go somewhere uh, and uh, study in a library, um, uh, have access to the material uh, uh, there. So uh, it's uh, it's really something something we're trying to do, and what we uh, discuss also with uh, the local authorities: how much space can we give in higher education for students to go to campus uh, to visit the library, but also to visit the local library and sit there and study with each other. Uh, how can we open up other spaces for students to study with each other? Yes, uh, so uh, it's on the table. Yeah, so um, what uh, a lot of questions we also got in is, because um, there's look, being looked into how we can open up again, um, which is yeah, also always uh, good. But uh, students are also uh, wondering how they're going to be compensated for, for this year. 
because uh, we recently learned that, uh, of course, the tuition next year will be halved for uh, for most yeah. students, for all students, um, but not everyone will be studying uh, next year who's been studying this year, which has arguably been um, yeah, the most difficult year for, for a lot of students uh, because some students will be graduating, some students just need to take a break uh, for a year, uh, taking a gap year, and they're wondering how will they be compensated for this year instead of next year. Yeah, um, I understand the question, but I hope students also understand that this uh, crisis is so big and we have so many issues that we um, can't target everyone. So what we did is uh, last year we had compensation for those students who had a delay uh, and uh, we will compensate with half the tuition uh, for next year. And um, uh, also uh, having uh, a longer ride on uh, a scholarship uh, uh, or uh, the, the OV chip card. Um, but it's um, it's hardly doable uh, to compensate everyone. And for those who graduate this year, uh, well, they did a wonderful job. And I think all students say, I'd rather have my diploma than have compensation uh, next year. So uh, if you graduate uh, this year, um, well, congratulations, well done, tremendously, but um, uh, I would say uh, uh, you better have a diploma than compensation uh, in, in the next year because you still ha do have uh, cost of living. So uh, to all the students um, uh, who are thinking about this, um, do your utmost uh, to uh, prevent a delay because still uh, a diploma is better than an, uh, a delay and uh, well uh, uh, it gives you uh, freedom to go on on the uh, labor market but i do understand the, uh, the question because they also they had a difficult year and they did a wonderful job in in, in graduating okay so uh, a really short question uh, so international students are also asking uh, if they get a half tuition payment for next year because this was not stated on the website okay, okay. well uh, uh, every everyone who pays uh, uh, the legal tuition fee uh, will have a uh, uh, half so uh, all the uh, Dutch and the uh, European students uh, for uh, the international uh, students uh, uh, we can't do it Another interesting question uh, that got sent in is um, how will you ensure that extra funding for the well-being and health of the students will be spent at the right places and what are the immediate visible effects for students? Because in the past the effects of extra funding in education, uh, for instance those caused by cutting student grants, have had a delay for several years because before becoming visible. So, um. uh, Yes, well we have, uh, we will have compensation for uh, in higher education this year uh, to have uh, an extra uh, impulse for student welfare, uh, extra teachers. Uh, uh, um, so uh, it, it will be money spent this year uh, and um, it will go to universities uh, and uh, universities of applied sciences. And um, I hope that they will involve a student and teacher in how to spend this money uh, in the best uh, in the best way, and they have to report on it. But uh, I'm not going to say from my office in The Hague this is how you have to spend it because that doesn't work. Uh, uh, at every uh, faculty, at every university, they will have to see where is uh, extra support the most needed. Uh, please involve students and teachers uh, uh, in that and uh, they ha will have to report. Uh, but uh, it's also up to you uh, to be critical on this. Okay, I have a question from the voice of God over here, because I don't have a camera. Um, but uh, there is one question coming in from the chat um, asking about, uh, or, or making a comment that their biggest concern for them is uncertainty and what will happen in the months. And this ends up causing a lot of stress uh, and uh, how things are changing on a, on a regular basis. Uh, and they just want to, uh, to, to, to see your take on this. Or yeah. part is empathy as well, but also uh, if you recognize uh, the effect that that has on, on students. 
Yes, uh, uh, I do recognize that uncertainty, I think at this moment is the most um, difficult issue to handle, uh, not only for students, but for a lot of people in society, uh, because we don't know what the virus will do and uh, if we will have uh, after uh, um, uh, the British uh, uh, virus, we ha will have uh, uh, other ones. How fast? Well, we, we hope that we can vaccinate as fast as possible, um, but there are, are still uncertainties. And what we see all over society, that uncertainty is always the most difficult thing to handle in your life. And it uh, asks from all of us, as a lot of resilience to, to, to cope with this. And especially, uh, I think for uh, young people, they, uh, well, they don't know uh, how um, will universities open up, uh, what uh, with the labor market uh, after I graduate, uh, what will the economy uh, do, what about housing, what about uh, traveling, uh, what about having a beer in a bar uh, uh, in the near uh, future. So, uh, yes. Uh, we see the uncertainty and we see what it's doing to uh, young people, what we see what it's doing in society and it's it's a great concern and it, it is um, in uh, what we discuss in the health effects of what we do in um, uh, our COVID-19 uh, uh, discussions. We also more and more have to look into not only the economic effects but also what it, it is doing to mental health of uh, people and especially students. Um, yes, yeah, so obviously it just uh, talks a bit about mental health, but a lot of students are asking um, how to cope with this short term and long term and what maybe the university or uh, we selves or maybe the government can help us with, uh, with coping with this loneliness and repetitiveness of everyday life currently with this online education. Yes. Um, well, what we try to do in, uh, at the moment, and this is uh, the decision the decisions we have to take tomorrow morning, is looking at what can we do short term uh, to help young people uh, coping with mental health, with loneliness, uh, with feelings of depression. Um, so what we are looking into uh, is, uh, of course, uh, uh, what can we do in opening up education again? Uh, and uh, I don't think it will be there tomorrow for higher education. What we do look in is sports. Uh, for young people, uh, having being able to play uh, football with your uh, team, playing hockey with your team, uh, well, it makes that you can, can come together with uh, 11 or 12, uh, playing in a team, seeing each other. Uh, so. That's one of the things we're looking after is uh, where can we provide spaces for interaction? Uh, we also, a couple of weeks ago, we launched a plan uh, and asked also um, the local authorities uh, um, to get together with uh, uh, universities uh, and see where can we provide space for people to meet safely. Uh, and. And the other thing I would like to say is, well, please uh, look after each other. Uh, if you're in a, a working group with 30 people, uh, try uh, also to, well, not only see each other online, but uh, go for a walk uh, in, in the uh, park. How, um, and I can understand, well, normally you say it's uh, something for old people to go and uh, have a meet for, for a walk, but uh, please have a walk, uh, uh, have a run. Uh, you can uh, have a run uh, in, in, in pairs. So find ways to uh, have a buddy, have someone uh, uh, you can talk to um, and who you can call uh, when you s and just say also, uh, I'm a bit lonely, please help. And that's what I would like to say for young people. It's not, uh, you don't have to be ashamed to ask for help. Uh, we all need these moments. And please, if you uh, have difficulties in coping with the situation, um, call someone uh, uh, at your university, uh, uh, a fellow student, someone, and ask for help. Uh, because that's what we have to do, look after each other. Personally, I have uh, looked up the psychologist 
in Delft, and there are waiting lines for in about eight or nine weeks, which is pretty long um, if you have some mental issues. Yeah. Um, so, is there any way we can change this? Well, we we, we tried. Uh, uh, we decided to. Uh, uh, give universities extra funding uh, to support uh, uh, students, uh, but that uh, doesn't change your waiting list. So in the meantime, um, you have to make sure that you uh, relate to someone and uh, just uh, look for help because uh, not everyone uh, needs uh, professional help. So a lot uh, we can do is in helping each other. Uh, so please, um, uh, Look for a buddy, uh, look for uh, a dean, a teacher, whatever. So now we have a little bit of a positive looking question. And uh, that question in that the student is asking is if the minister thinks that there is any positive outcomes from uh, the COVID situation in terms of the impact on education. Um, oh yes, uh, I think we learned a lot. And before uh, before COVID nineteen, we had this uh, uh, plan with uh, all the universities and how uh, can we speed up uh, uh, digital education? Uh, well, we did speed up uh, a little bit too fast, uh, but um, we learned a lot. And um, what I hope that, uh, of course, uh, we still have. Uh, a lot to learn in doing it better, uh, but what we see is in having these lectures online, uh, which you can repeat endlessly at home, uh, so e maybe even I can understand uh, what you're uh, uh, learning here, uh, but uh, it also gives room for uh, more uh, student-teacher contact, uh, for more working groups. Uh, so in this blended education we will uh, i hope we will have after covid i think uh, it adds a lot of quality for students uh, so i hope uh, we will get there soon uh, but as a, a, a choice and not because it's necessary all right i got another inter uh, interesting question here um, um not regarding uh, the the current situation but in general um and they're asking for your opinion um should the modern tu or just the student be more concerned about the implications of their actions and their commitment for their future as adults so focusing on getting connections working experience uh, internships doing honors programs and uh, that sort of uh, stuff, or should we prioritize uh, enjoying our time studying? And uh, if it's the second, do you believe spending extra time obtaining a degree should become an accepted course of uh, action to reduce stress uh, for this? Um, well, it's 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 not uh, the one or the other. Uh, you have to balance. Uh, of course, it's good to invest in uh, uh, in your CV in uh, activities. But it's also uh, uh, good for uh, you as a person to enjoy uh, your life as a, as a student. And um, uh, personally, I do believe that um, sometimes taking a bit more time uh, to finish your studies uh, can help you a lot of, as a person. Uh, so, and some students are uh, happy to do it in uh, in four, four years, and they develop as a person. But uh, sometimes I see uh, it gives some students too much stress to uh, being in this uh, red race. Oh, I uh, have to finish in uh, uh, four years. I have this uh, have to have all these activities uh, on my CV. So please um, uh, do relax a, a, a little. Uh, and uh, some of you are so young, uh, and sometimes. I, um, uh, for example, I graduated when I was 21 and went to work and I always uh, uh, regretted it a, a bit that I didn't take more time uh, uh, to, uh, well, enjoy life, develop as a person because later in life uh, you never uh, do it again. Um, so next one is actually a really fun question. So who is the coolest or most famous person you have ever met? <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, the, the most famous isn't uh, always the most, the, the coolest. Uh, so uh, I think uh, who's the most, 
famous uh, pool. Uh, I think it's Madeleine Albright, uh, uh, who I had lunch with, uh, which was great, uh, which was very inspiring. And well, uh, uh, and uh, but and, and she was also kind of cool, uh, yeah, uh, and and still is at her her age. And the fun thing was, uh, uh, and it was fully coincidence and a, a, a typical, maybe a typical female thing, but we wore the same shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and that gave us a, a great fun. But I think uh, that was the coolest meeting I had, I, I believe. Yeah. And, and, and the coolest experience was uh, um, speaking at the uh, uh, UN. Uh, uh, you also know the big hall where uh, you have uh, the annual meeting. And uh, well, uh, I had the ability to speak there for three minutes, and uh, that was kind of a cool experience. Yeah, you have a bucket list. <laughs> so there's a lot of students also asking um, about the fact that there's a lot of emphasis on trying to get uh, middle bar school students back into the classroom, uh, and wondering why there seems to be a stronger uh, push to get middle bar school students back and not university students when there isn't that big of an age difference. Um, yes, I, I, I understand the question, but uh, what, where we look at is uh, where um, uh, where by, 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 by closing uh, secondary schools uh, uh, and universities, uh, uh, where is the most damage done to uh, young people? Where is it most needed? And I do believe that everyone uh, is very eager to get back to campus. Uh, so uh, uh, we are taking the first steps in, uh, and that's only for uh, students in secondary school, also one day uh, a week or one day and a half, uh, probably, and I hope tomorrow for students in vocational uh, training. Uh, and what also what we look at is who's most vulnerable and uh, well we look at have to look at the numbers who add up but um, uh, I can assure you that uh, students in university well they're on top of the stack from still the, the things we have to open up uh, but also uh, well there are uh, there are shops and um, uh, a lot of enterprises which are still closed but uh, for the whole of government education Opening up education is top priority. So one of the problems that students are facing is not so much about the, the education in learning and, uh, and studying the material, but it's really sort of the, the, the interaction that's the personal connections and stuff that happen online. Uh, and, you know, um, we're relying on, on professors and teachers, and this is a technical university, and these are my words, not, not the students' words, but engineers aren't necessarily the best people to uh, foster interpersonal connections. You know, we, we tend to be uh, less social than the, the rest of the general population. So how can we deal with these sorts of challenges? I come, I come from a family of engineers, uh, uh, so I, 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 I know. But still, uh, uh, you all have to do the effort because it helps tremendously. Uh, I was... Uh, uh, around Christmas, I visited University of Maastricht, who has a lot of international students as well. And uh, they were asking the question, what do they have to do at Christmas, uh, not having their family here? So uh, they uh, asked everyone, please uh, have a buddy and ask, invite them at your uh, home. Uh, so uh, I think you're all very technical, so you know how to make an app group or a chat group where you can uh, divide people. The, uh, and even you can do it online in, in groups of two or three. Uh, I know uh, my, my, my daughter also studies and she has these working groups of three uh, where they meet online, uh, but also are being able to, uh, uh, well, buddy up uh, uh, sometimes. So um, yes, I know for engineers it's uh, sometimes difficult, uh, but uh, you have to do the effort. Yeah, hey, well, uh, thank you so much for uh, being here uh, and talking to all the, the students. Um, I think it's uh, really nice to hear what you, what you have to say uh, about it, and I hope students feel a bit more uh, heard in uh, by yeah by the government now. Um, yeah. Yes, and it was uh, uh, well. Uh, thanks for your time, and uh, it was great to be here. Great to hear you. 
and um, well, um, uh, I'm, I'm I'm really uh, impressed by uh, uh, your lecture. Uh, it's it was it, uh, it's 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 hard for me to understand, but it it is it was really uh, uh, well done and um, well uh, and know uh, your. Uh, on my mind every moment of the day and uh, also uh, your well-being is on the table of the government uh, uh, tomorrow and the day after and the day after and uh, we really are concerned and we're really trying to open up for you as soon as possible.